Hey there! Try this. Pick a spot on the screen, and while keeping your eyes on it, move your head around. Did you do it? Okay, whatever. The point is, the muscles that control your eyes had to be adjusting their tension to be perfectly compensating for the movement of your head. To make that happen, your brain has to use a number of different circuits and reflexes. And today, we'll take a look at one of these, the vestibular ocular reflex, which ties your internal accelerometer to your eye muscles. Hi, I'm Yuri. By day I write software, and by night I read neuroscience textbooks and papers, and make videos about them. If you like what you see, subscribe to this channel. The references for this video are in the description. Okay, so WTF is the vestibular ocular reflex. Let's draw a diagram and add pieces to it one by one. The first piece is the vestibular apparatus, your internal accelerometer. It gives you a sense of up and down, and a sense of motion. It's actually part of your inner ear. Not this whole thing, most of it is there for hearing, just this part. And the way it works is, it has a number of tubes made out of bones, filled with liquid, as well as bundles of neurons leading from them. The neurons are sending electric spikes at a constant frequency. And if your head happens to move, the liquid inside the tube sloshes, and then the neurons either increase the frequency of the spikes, or decrease the frequency of the spikes, depending on which way the head turns. So let's add these vestibular organs to our diagram, as well as the neurons coming out of them. So that's the input. And then the output are the muscles that control the eyes, or more specifically, the neurons that control the muscles that control the eyes. The way these muscles work is very simple. When the neuron that controls them fires a spike, they contract a little. And if the neuron fires a lot of spikes, they contract a lot, moving your eye a lot. And so we have our input and output. So really, all we need to do is just to connect them. And in fact, that's exactly what's there, just direct neuron connections. Now, if you pull up the Wikipedia page for the vestibular ocular reflex, you'll see a slightly different wiring diagram for the same circuit, one that replaces this direct connection with this indirect one. And I've seen some textbooks and papers draw it one way and some the other way, and it's kind of hard to tell which one's right. But if you step through the circuit, you'll actually find that it doesn't really matter because both of them work the same way. So how does the circuit work? How does it make it so that when your head turns one way, your eyes turn the opposite way? Let's step through this. When your head turns left, the fluid in the vestibular apparatus, in both of them, sloshes the opposite way and the frequency at which their neurons fire changes. Specifically, the left one will be sending more electric spikes, and the right one less. And that means that these neurons that connect to the motor neurons will be sending more spikes too. And these blue ones, these are inhibitory neurons that act as brakes, they will be sending more inhibitory signals to the opposing muscles. And on the other side of the head, the same neurons will be sending less spikes. So what effect does this have on the neurons that control the eye muscles? Why don't you hit the pause button and try to figure it out yourself? Alright, if you got it, congratulations. And if you just want to hear the answer, here it is. These neurons will send more spikes, and therefore these muscles will contract. And the remaining neurons will send less spikes, and the corresponding muscles will relax. And so the eyes will turn. And that's the vestibular ocular reflex.